Hey, welcome back to Site Tech Inner Mountain SiteWorks training videos. In this video, I want to show you about an update that just came out from Trimble for SiteWorks on 1.70 and an ability that it gives us to geo-reference background images from the actual data collector. Um, traditionally, we've had to bring that in and bring it into Business Center and capture that image and reference it that way. Uh, this new update allows you to just take a set of plans, any sets of plans, or any PDF images in general, and actually reference it to some sort of line work or control points or anything on the screen yourself. If any of you are familiar with doing the background images through Trimble Business Center or any other CAD program, it's a lot like that. But for you customers that have never used um, the business center side or don't have that option, this is a great feature, a great option. So let me show you how this works. And once again, I'm going to repeat, this is a new version that just came out 1.70. So if you're in your software update option or ability to go ahead and do an update on Trimble SiteWorks to 1.7. If not, I if you don't have that ability to get to 1.7 and you're out of your software version, I will make another video on how to do the background images a little bit cleaner through Business Center. But what you do here is I've got some images on a, a thumb drive, my D drive. Where you start is with the gear on the right side of the screen right here. If you hit this gear, you've got your traditional image tab at the top right here. If you click on that, you've got the options in here just like we had before to turn on and off background images as it will. But now we have a couple extra icons. What you do have to do is on the top left here, check this box for display background image to get started. The transparency, don't worry about that for right now. But right here, you can see if I drop this bar down, I have no images in here at this point. I'm going to start with this plus button to the right side right here to navigate to go find them. As soon as I hit that, it's kind of a game of where are these files at. They're not on my windows at the top right here. I'm going to drop this drop down and put it on Kingston. If you have it on your windows or have downloaded it to the data collector, fine. But I've got it on my Kingston. I'm going to hit that. And down here at the bottom, I've got one called grading plans. So I'm going to open that up, and I've got a couple different grading plans on here. I've got um, one that has quite a few images, and then I've got this boot camp plans. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. That's my PDF images for the current project that's open. I'm going to hit accept, and you're going to get this PDF image or import option that comes in. So I only have two in here. You can see where it says page one of two. If you had a whole bunch that you had brought in here, um, meaning you brought in a whole entire plan set. You got 80, 90, 100 PDFs, whatever it is, but you know that you only want to reference maybe page 50 or 60 or whatever it is. That's where you can actually just type it in or go to it there. But I'm going to bring in both of these right now just to show you. So this is my very first image on the left right here. And for the resolution, you've got the ability to do low, medium, and high. I would always just suggest bringing it in as high, my, my personal experience. Um, when you zoom in on ones that are low, it doesn't come in very well. or They're very hard to visual see the, uh, the letters and numbers. So page one, resolution high. I'm going to hit import. It's going to bring that one in for me. Once it's in here, it's going to say, hey, the image uh, file is uh, missing a world file. Do you want to georeference it? Meaning if we had georeferenced it in a CAD program, it would already have that, that quality to it. It had already been moved and brought to the line work. So, yes, we're going to georeference it as a background image. Hit yes. And now we're going to have a screen that comes up that's going to allow us to do it um, by picking one side and then picking another in the exact same spot. So for this very top one here where it's checked for define reference point, you've got this menu right here that you can go into and actually pick it by point where I've got my control points right here. I'm not going to use the menu because I have control points on the left side right here, but I don't have any control points on my PDF that I feel like are accurate enough, even though I do show those control right there. What I'm going to do is show you how to use the actual lines or corners of things to, to use them as reference. So from the left screen right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick my furthest corner point up here of my, my project. So I'm going to zoom way in, and I'm going to just go ahead and free click that. 
And then on the right side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and come out and I'm going to pick that exact same point as a reference point. Zoom way in and then click. Now, if you felt like you missed right there, you can go back up, check that top box and you can move that around. You can see as I click, it allows me to kind of move around if I didn't get it in the exact right spot. So then once I feel like those two are both referenced right, I'm going to click this box for point number two. I'm going to zoom all the way out, and then I'm going to pick another known point. I'm going to come right down in here, click on that corner. Then I'm going to go to the right side box right here and do the same thing. I'm going to zoom down in that exact same spot. And if I feel like I've got it, perfect, we're going to go ahead and hit accept. So we've both filled both of those out, and now I have an actual image in here. So if you drop that drop down, you can see Bootcamp Plans, page one. The one thing that did change, if any of you are familiar with using background images before, is in the transparency before, zero was basically almost, or 10% was basically barely showing you any of the image, and 100% was full. You could see everything. It was as bright as it could be. They've switched it here, um, and it's more like in Trimble Business Center where the transparency is backwards. So zero is 100%. If you think of it that way, it's full. It's all the way up, and 90% is as faded as, it, faded as it can go before. It just basically doesn't show anymore. So just remember that that is backwards. So I'm going to put that on 0%, and then we'll go ahead and hit accept. And then you can come out here and see that that image has been referenced to all of my line work. So what you can do is a little bit of a check. You can zoom in and you can see that the, the TBC has come in really well. It's a pretty good image. But you can start referencing all the different lines to make sure that they match. If they don't, like right here where you, you can see that it might be missing just a little bit on building corners, I know that the question has came up. How can I move it at this point once it's done? You don't have to delete it and start over. You just go back into your gear right here. Go back to images. And when I'm currently on that image, I'm going to just hit the geo reference button again. As soon as you come in here, it does want you to re-reference each one of those. So let's go ahead and just do that again. I'm going to re-reference this corner right here. Let's see if we can get it to line up any better. I'm going to free click in the middle right there, a little bit more in the middle of that line. So then on the second one, we'll do the exact same process again. Go ahead and hit accept, load it again. And now you can do a couple checks. Looks like it matches quite a bit better. So that image is in. Now I'm going to go back into my gear and I'm going to go to image tab again and I'm going to bring in my next one. So I'm going to go in, do the same thing. I'm going to find it in my grading plans on my thumb drive here, bootcamp plans. This time I'm going to do page two. Switch that to page two, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to import it as a higher resolution. Now, just for consistency, it's not a bad idea to pick the exact same spots on the set of plans um, that you did from the first one, but you don't have to. Just to show you, if you want to use more of a, a building corner, it doesn't matter what you use as long as it matches on both sides. So here I'm going to use the building corner on this one. Sometimes those outer lines may not match the way you like, so this is a little bit of a game of move it till you like it. So right there I didn't like it, so I'm going to recheck that top corner, and I'm going to move it there till I like it. So same thing on this next one. We'll go ahead, maybe we'll come down and use the corner of this house. Um, I have found that zooming way in is pretty helpful, because if you just free click up here, I'll show you. I mean, I missed terribly on that, right? So... That's why it's nice to actually zoom way in, and then you can get a nice free click right in the middle there. The best we can get it. Go ahead and hit accept. Now we've got another one in here. So if you drop that drop down, we've got the plans. 
page one and page two. So now we're going to load page two and go out and reference and see how close that one got. Looks really good on that corner right there. You can go out to the corners of the actual property line. We can come in here to building corners and see how it referenced. That one missed just a little bit. There again, you can go in and re-reference it if you feel like it's off. But personally, I wouldn't get too stuck on it. I mean, the re the background image is honestly just something to let you see, you know, like right here, storm, rim, in and out. And it's just to give you something close. It's really not intended like it is in Business Center to where you're going to reference it and draw line work off of it. So um, there again, go into the gear, go to images, and if you need to change the transparency, maybe put that on 50, kind of lightens it up a little bit. Whatever works for you. And then you can just go back into that gear and turn that off. Now, if you need to add any more later on, you can simply just keep adding to the project. But this allows you to do it right here from the data collector in the field. Um, one reason I think this would be really helpful is let's say you got a revision. You're out in the field. You're not the guy that normally builds the stuff in CAD, but you want to bring that revision in to be able to see where the bubbled area is or maybe where the changes are on the set of plans. This would be a good option to be able to bring it straight in. But hopefully this helps if you uh, want to do this with your data collector, if you're on 1.70. And I will do another video for those of you that aren't on 1.70 and uh, use the CAD program. So thank you for watching this video from Site Tech Intermountain. SiteWorks training videos on georeferencing background images, sets of plans.